We are all very joyful today to have such a great blessing. Our sister Marie Luisa is making a great effort to be in the service with us today. Because today our sister Marie Luisa is here for the first time in the Mauritius Island, carrying out the first Bible study live in the African continent. Glory to our Lord. Today we're going to enjoy a very beautiful Bible study and we're going to learn from the lips of our beloved Sister Marie Luisa. Sister Marie Luisa, we love you greatly. On vous aime. Un applaudissement pour notre bien Sister Marie Luisa. A round of applause for her sister. My heart is overflowing with joy. I am so happy to be here with you. I love you with all of my heart. I have sent you greetings through videos. Whom among you have received that greeting? Today, I am greeting you with all of my heart. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. You may be seated. I give thanks to God because he has allowed me to be here I had to fly about 23, 24 hours from where I live in Florida, the United States, to here. It was about a 24 hour flight, but in the other side of the world. But for God, we are all very close with one heart. Loving God. When I was a little girl, I was about eight years old. I had a dream. And I dreamt with the Lord Jesus Christ. I dreamt that it was the end of the world. And, and I saw that Jesus Christ was sending people or souls to hell, and others to heaven. And I was looking at him when suddenly he said to me, help me choose the souls that will go to heaven, to the kingdom. And I said, yes, Lord, I will help you. I began to help the Lord and I saw the dead bodies. And I took someone by the arm, someone, a dead person, and I sent them to heaven. I sent them all to heaven. I sent them all to delight with the Lord and no one to hell. That was my dream. A few years went by. When I was pre-adolescent, I learned about the things of God I found an evangelical church, a Christian church, and there I learned about the Bible. I never in my life had read the Bible, but when I began to do it, I fell in love with God. I fell in love with these scriptures. So that is when God, from that time, began to clothe me with abilities, with power, and he has helped me and he has taught me to continue to press on in this path. I found, or I met, my husband, who was Luis Eduardo Moreno, and he was a pastor in an evangelical church. He 
taught me, and he would say, I am seeking the work of the Holy Spirit. I am looking for the spiritual gifts, like prophecy, because the Bible says that God gives these things to his believers or followers, to those who believe in him. And he said to me, I have not found in any church anyone speaking the spiritual things. The majority of people is materialistic. They have their world and they live worrying about working, if they have food or money. And on the contrary, they do not worry about seeking their spiritual things. For feeling God. That is when he taught me that we needed to seek the spiritual things. And I began to read and to search the Bible. And I realized that truly, we needed to seek the spiritual gifts. We needed to seek the spiritual gift of prophecy, the gift of dreams, visions, revelation, discernment, doctrine. We needed to learn a lot of doctrine. In order to please God, and this way, we are able to be happy and one day attain eternal life. And we began to pray until God gave us that which we greatly desired. This was about 60 years ago. Do you see how young I am? Right? I am very young. Well, I have been working for God these 60 years. And in these 60 years, there are about 1,500 churches in about 80 or more countries. Doesn't that bring you joy? And God is manifesting himself in people's hearts. And I am going to begin to speak to you and tell you that God, in the beginning, made a man and a woman, Adam and Eve. And have you heard about this? That God created Adam and Eve? Some of you have heard about it, yes? You can answer in French. Have you heard that God made Adam and Eve? Have you not heard that he exists or that God made Adam and Eve? Have you really ever heard of this? How do you say yes in French? So those who have heard that God created Adam and Eve say oui or no. Oh, in French, no, no. What happened is that God made humans and he taught them his commandments. Years went by and humankind began to grow. And God taught in their conscience his way, his word. But years went by, centuries went by, people on earth multiplied, and men and women turned away from God. And they all began to live their life, to create their own gods, to create their own religion, and their own customs. And the enemy, the devil, had deceived Eve and Adam in paradise, and he took it upon himself to destroy the mindset of those people who began to grow and to multiply upon the face of the earth, and he taught them to do what was evil, to go against God. And everyone began to sin, to disobey, and to be very evil before God. God became angry, and he sent a flood. 
and he only left Noah and his family. And that flood destroyed or took many people's lives. And when Noah and his family left the ark, everyone, there was nobody there. Everyone had died. God spoke to Noah, made a covenant with him, and gave him blessings to his sons. And he said what the future of each son would be. There were three sons. And so generations passed, and each of Noah's sons, one, one did the will of God, which was the family that Abraham came from. Afterward, God taught them the commandments, and he taught them his law. But none of Noah's other sons each one went to take over territories and to create their own people. And that is how they formed great nations. That is how a numerous people was formed at that time. But God wanted to make a people that was holy. A people that would love him, glorify him that would do God's will. And that is why God raised the people of Israel with Moses. And he told Moses, I am going to raise an exclusive holy people to praise me so that they may follow me, that they may be different than the other nations. That is what God wanted. And so God raised that people that was there in Egypt, prisoners or slaves, for 430 years until Moses came and God said, I am going to take my people out of Egypt because they mistreat them. But I will be giving them a land that flows milk and honey and they will be happy there. And everyone will obey my commandments. So then, God supported Moses. He gave him powers. And there were miracles and wonders there in Egypt. And God took his people out. He made them live in the wilderness for 40 years. And he taught them his commandments. And he told them that they would enter a fruitful land, fertile where there would be an abundance of blessings. But they needed to obey and fulfill God's commandments. So then, centuries went by, and the people did not obey God. God raised prophets, and the prophets prophesied and gave messages to the people and to the kings and rulers. To the judges, they were the first rulers. And God sent messages to them so that they would obey the word of God and that they may turn away from sin and to turn away from idolatry, to not make gods, to not make images, saying that they are God. God began to teach them that there was only one God, but the people did not want to listen. They did not want to hear. God became angry and God made the decision of punishing that people after many centuries. When that territory of Israel was populated, where the 12 sons of Jacob formed 12 cities, 12 states or provinces in a country, or territories, however you may call them. And there, they multiplied to many. But at the same time, sin multiplied as well. And disobedience. And God was angry. And he said, I am going to punish you. I am going to destroy you. But in the future, I will be raising a holy, perfect 
people, which is going to obey me. They are going to serve me. And God prepared the prophets to prophesy about this matter, what was coming in the future. God mentioning that the Savior would come, that the Messiah would come, that a perfect king would come, that would be forming a people, a holy nation, and that they would be obeying God. But of course, that would happen with the help of God himself, with the help of the Holy Spirit. And so, we are going to be reading here a little bit about these promises that God made through the prophets. And here in Joel... In the book of the prophet Joel, chapter 2, verse 28, we find one of many promises that God made the people in antiquity, the people in the past, the people of Israel. And God made them promises through the prophets. And since the Lord had become angry, and he wanted for the future to raise a new people, a people of Israel that is spiritual, a people that did submit themselves and obeyed his commandments, and that people would worship and honor and love God. Therefore, in Joel, the prophet Joel 2.28, it says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit. And this is because in the prior verses, God announced a punishment for that people of Israel. They had lived thousands of years in sin, and disobeying God, looking down upon the word of God. And here in Joel chapter 1, he is announcing the punishment he would give. He was going to make them disappear from the face of the earth as children of God or as his favorite people. And that is why, in verse 28, that is why God says, and after these things, after I give them their punishment, then I'm going to pour out my spirit on all human beings. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, in that future. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. And in verse 31, it says, The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood, referring to the people of Israel that was the important people. They were unique. The one that all nations knew as the holy people, the people of God. God had them as that sun that shines. That is so important. But they had not obeyed God. But when the work of the Holy Spirit appeared in the future, then everyone would be ashamed for not having obeyed God for not having loved his word, his way, and for not having done his will. Here we have the promise that would come in the future. And we continue in another promise that says, In the Gospel according to John 4, In the Gospel according to John chapter 4, in verse 
24, we see here that God truly fulfilled his promise. And he sent our Lord Jesus Christ. After so many centuries that passed, God sent Jesus Christ. But in Jesus Christ was God, and he began to work, to evangelize, and to teach the people of Israel, the people of Jerusalem, or the tribe of Judah. He spoke to them about his gospel, about his word, about the good tidings of salvation. He said, You have never submitted yourself to God. You lost the blessing from God. You lost salvation. And now God is angry with you. But I have come to intervene, the Lord Jesus Christ said, so that you may be saved, so that you may be blessed, so that you may attain salvation, eternal life. That is what the Lord Jesus Christ said. I am here so that you may believe in me, because from now on, I will manifest myself to all human beings, man or woman, in any place of the world. I will manifest myself, and I will give peace, and I will give happiness, and one day I will give you eternal life to all of those who prepare their heart and accept and believe in my path, my word and fulfill my commandments. All of these things were what he spoke about, among other things, and he taught during his life while he was on earth. The Bible says he was here until he was 33 years old, but he did not manifest for 33 years. He only manifested when there were three years left. He began to preach the gospel. He formed his apostles, and he taught the people and said to them, everything that Moses did to this day is now annulled because with death, with the sacrifice that I am making, the law of Moses will be annulled, removed. And so all of you will be saved if you believe in me and if you fulfill my word. And this was what he taught in those three years. He worked miracles, wonders, many signs. And he told his apostles and the people that listened to him and believed in him. He told them, I am leaving. I need to leave. But I will not leave you alone. I am going to manifest myself to you. And I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, who is here written, we are going to read here in John 4, 24, when God speaks to the Samaritan woman. When he tells the Samaritan woman, he says, give me a drink. And she says, Lord, the well is too deep. I cannot draw water for you. And the Lord said, if you drink the water that I have, no one would be thirsty. And she said, I want of that water. And he said, you need to believe in me. I will be the savior. I have come as a mediator between humans and God. And you must believe and trust in me because I am the water of eternal life. And she said, yes, Lord, give me of that water. And the Lord told her, go, call your husband and I will give you that water. And she said, I don't have a husband. The Lord says, yes, you are telling me the truth. You have had five husbands. And the one whom you have now is not your husband. 
So she was committing fornication. And she was astonished that this man told her her truth, what was hidden in her life. And she said, Lord, you are a prophet. Then the Lord identifies himself to her. And she begins to say, Lord, where are we going to worship God? Where must we go and seek God? Where will we seek God? Where do we go? Because here, the Jews say that it's in Jerusalem. And over there, the Samaritans say that it's in Samaria. And so, where should we seek you? And the Lord said, no. The hour is coming when you will neither in Jerusalem nor in Samaria will you seek God. And he says, God is spirit. And we are going to read in verse 24. It says, God is spirit. And those who worship him or who believe in him or who are going to seek God, they must do it in spirit and truth. That is the only way that you should worship God in spirit because he is a spirit. He is not material where I'm able to touch it like this. No, he is not an image where I can look at it and say, look at this figure. Look at God, how powerful, how great. He has blue eyes. He has blonde hair. He has black hair. No, God is not like that. That is what he taught the Samaritan woman. And he said, God is a spirit. The time will come where neither in Jerusalem nor Samaria or Israel will you go to seek God. In any place in the world, any corner of the world, or in this corner here in Mauritius Island, where there are hearts like yours that God has looked upon and is looking upon you, and he is going to give you happiness. He is going to give you peace. He is going to give you triumph, the victory. You, with that God in spirit, will feel a new life in your heart. You will experience true happiness and true peace. That is what you are going to experience. And God is fulfilling what he said to the Samaritan woman. In any place, you will find God because he is spirit. Glory to our God. Therefore, here in John 14, here in John 14, the Lord made a promise, the Lord Jesus Christ. As he was preaching the gospel, people would listen to him, his disciples as well. And he then, since he knew that he was going to be sacrificed, 14.10, In 15, the Lord says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Fulfill the word. Obey God. Love God in spirit. Do not make images. Do not make a statue or a painting. Do not seek God in material things because he is spirit. Seek him. And God will be there near you, just as he is today with us. Blessed is the Lord. And the Lord Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. That helper is called the spirit of truth. In verse 17, it says, The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you, my disciples, you do know him. 
because I have been with you and you have seen the wonders of God, the wonders and miracles, and you have felt in your heart the presence of God. And I have been with you and it is God with you. Therefore, you are going to understand me that God is spirit and you must seek him in spirit. And the Lord says, I will send you the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. That was the sign that is the proof that we today have to believe that we are walking in the true path of God. And the proof is that the Spirit of God today is with us. And we have lived and enjoyed the experiences that the early Christians lived here, for example, in Acts. For example, here in Acts, in chapter 2, we have the fulfillment when the Lord told his disciples, I am leaving, but I am going to send the Holy Spirit to be with you forever. And here in Acts, it was fulfilled. And it says here that the Lord told them, he says, do not leave Jerusalem. He told them here in chapter one, the first few verses. He told them not to leave Jerusalem in verse four. Do not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise that I made you. That he was going to send the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit may abide with you and guide you and teach you and tell you what you ought to do. And he will teach you the true path that will lead you to God and to eternal life. And the Lord said this. That is why we have the proof here in Acts 2, that the apostles and other people, it says that there were 120 people in that place, a little more than double of those who are here. And it says that they were all praying and praising God when the Lord Jesus Christ sent the Holy Spirit. He sent it. He said, I have promised and now I'm going to send him. And that day came and everybody was praying. And verse number two says, There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Let us keep in mind that it's something similar to when a hurricane is coming with very strong winds. And it says a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house, the whole house where they were sitting. It shook with the presence of the Spirit. And it says in verse 4, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And how did they know that they had been filled with the Holy Spirit? Because they began to speak with other languages, different from their own native language. And they began to talk and talk. And there were many people who began to come to listen to them. After hearing that sound, and it says that they asked what was going on. It says that there were people from many different nations in Jerusalem at that time. And here it says that at that time, it says there were Medes, Parthians, Elamites here in verse 9. And those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene. As you can see, from that time, God had love for Africa as well. They were there. 
listening to the word of God from the very beginning. And it says, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, they understood the language or the message that they were speaking in their prayer taken over by the Spirit of God. They were speaking in other tongues, in other languages, and all people who spoke a different language, they were listening to the divine message. There we see the fulfillment of the Lord Jesus Christ. When he told the Samaritan woman, the hour is coming where neither in Jerusalem nor in Samaria will they seek God. Because God is spirit, his word will be for everyone. And we must praise and seek God in spirit. And these were the wonders, the fulfillment of the promises that God made in Joel, that the Lord spoke in John, and through all of the prophets, that he would be sending the Holy Spirit, and that there would be spiritual gifts. And they began to prophesy, to see visions, and they began to work miracles. God began to heal people and deliver them and to remove sadness, bitterness, remove illnesses, to change and to cleanse each person so that each person may be happy with God, to be happy. And that is why today we are preaching this word. We are teaching people that today there are thousands of religions. There are many who say to be Christians, and many say they read the Bible, but they do not have the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. God does not speak to them in prophecy, nor in dreams or visions. And so we have lived these experiences ourselves for over 60 years. And we began with four people praying to God every night, asking for the Holy Spirit, asking for the gifts until the Lord gave us these gifts, gave us the Holy Spirit. And the Lord to this day has raised many people he gives them visions. He gives them dreams. He speaks through prophecy. God has worked thousands of miracles. Healing many. Has worked wonderful signs. God has transformed people's lives. Today, people suffer from depression. They suffer from insanity, dementia, they suffer sadness and physical illnesses. Many people commit suicide. They take their lives and they do not have peace. And they have depression and bitterness. Life has no meaning for many. And it's not money. It's not because of the lack of money. But because today we have the enemy, the devil, that from the very beginning has taught humankind to sin and to oppose God, to oppose the Lord. But we have understood this path. The Holy Spirit has taught us and is teaching us. He is guiding us and leading us and gives us peace. I know that now, at the end of this service, God, to you, will give each one of you a blessing. And it will be a material blessing, like removing your illness, removing spiritual bonds and sadness, bitterness, grudges, rebelliousness, stubbornness. The Lord will remove all of this, and He will also be healing, and He will be transforming your heart, and He is going to give you all the desire and the hope to press on, 
to seek that true God in spirit, in truth, that speaks, that shows people in visions and dreams what people should do or how they should do it, how they should behave in their lives. And so God is going to be in your hearts. I know that God is in the hearts of many, but there are others who are still lacking. But today, God is going to be in your hearts. And you from now on, some, because there are already some who know God's peace, but those who are missing it, they're going to know God's peace. They're going to feel transformed. They will feel as a different person. You will feel the desire to read the Bible of searching about God, about this path, and you will find God and you will attain your wishes because God is going to be with you. God is going to bless you because God has come to this island to bless it. To bless is not to give billions of dollars to people, but spiritual blessings and peace and one day eternal life. And among you, I know that from now on, God is going to be making changes, transformations, and very soon, the Lord is going to allow for here to be an established church with men and women who are going to preach the word of God here. People who were born here. The people who were born here. God is going to raise them. He is going to put them to preach, to teach this gospel, this true word, which is God who gives it to us. We did not learn this from any university. No, the things of God is not learned in universities. The things of God comes from heaven. They come to our heart. They come to our mind. He changes us. He blesses us. He gives us powers. He gives us authority. He supports us. He gives us abilities. He allows us to speak about him and for people to be healed. And they are healed that people may be happy and they are happy because God uses human beings who follow him and love him like the apostles today as well. There are apostles. There are prophets. There are teachers. Today, there are pastors, men and women who are placed by God, who are working in over 1,500 churches that there are in over 80 countries. Glory to our God. So you are number 1,501 here in Mauritius. Because God has come here to bring the blessing, to rescue you all, so that you may know true happiness and true peace. May God be with you. Believe in him. Believe in that God in spirit. You close your eyes, and if you can kneel, kneel. Raise your hands, close your eyes, and say, God, the one who spoke to the Samaritan woman, the one who spoke through the prophets, the one who spoke through Moses, I am here that you may also speak to me and guide me and that you may teach me, lead me. I want to know about you. I want to feel you in my being. I want you to speak to me. Teach me your way. Teach me your doctrine. If you do it this way, God is there close. And he is going to listen to you. And he is going to give you 
your prayers or petitions, what you are speaking to him about in that moment. And if one of you is not happy, say, Lord, give me happiness. I want to know what happiness is. He's going to give it to you. He's going to give you that happiness. If someone feels that they don't have peace, say, Lord, give me peace. I want to know you. I want to have dreams about you. And the Holy Spirit will come. And he will manifest himself in your lives. God is not far away. God is not in the United States, in Latin America. No. He is everywhere. You see, God is here with us. Today, he is with us. He is observing each one of you. Knowing each one of your needs, your wishes, your thoughts. May my God clothe you with grace for him. That my God may raise very soon a preacher, male or female, here in this place. And that it may not be today my first and only time coming here. That God may allow me to come and visit you again. So that I may next time hear the preacher, male or female, from here. May the glory be to our God. May my God bless you. I love you. I love you in the love of God. And now I'm going to give the opportunity for three questions or four questions if you would like to ask something. Yes, go ahead. Ask your question, sister. Nous vous aimons tellement beaucoup et nous remercions Dieu que je vous êtes ici. J'ai une question, tu as la Bible, un 12, dans le somme 12 et 1 à 5, somme 12, 1 à 5, au verset, nous avons... The sister has a question in Psalms chapter 12. Nous avons le lèvre avec nous qui sera notre maître. Et nous avons appris que nous devons être prudents dans notre façon de parler et de nous comporter. Pourriez-nous nous apprendre davantage sur cette expression Nous avons le lèvre avec nous qui sera notre maître. The sister asks, sometimes we've been taught that we need to be prudent. Excuse me, sister, verse number four. And what did it say in French? It reads, we have our own lips with us. Who will be our Lord? So the sister asks, we have to be prudent. But many times people say, no, I am the owner of all that I say. If you could please teach us regarding this expression. We have our lips with us. Our lips are our own. Who Very is well. Lord over us? In order to understand this verse, verse four, verse number four, we need to read here, beginning from verse one, that says, it says, help Lord for the godly man ceases. In other words, Help, Lord, there are no more people who will seek you. The faithful disappear from among the sons of men. He says, Lord, all the people that loved you disappeared. He says, they speak idly. Everyone with his neighbor. With flattering lips. But they are hypocrites. That is what verse 2 says. And so it says... The Lord replies in verse 3. He says, Don't worry, because I will take care of punishing the flattering lips and the liars, because they have a tongue that speaks proud things, and I will punish them. That is what verse 3 is saying. Verse 4 says, I will be punishing, the Lord says, those who have said, With our tongue we will prevail. In other words, they thought that they were wise, intelligent, philosophers who understood and knew many things. And they would tell people, don't believe in that gospel. Don't believe in Jesus Christ. He is a liar. What the apostles teach, it is a lie. You need to believe in us. We are the great philosophers, great sophists that speak and we are very intelligent. 
That is what they would say. That is why the Lord said that he was going to punish them. He was going to punish them because they were not going to be as great and important in verse four for being someone well spoken or to know a lot, just to know a lot. He says no. And it says, and the tongue that speaks proud things who have said with our tongue, we will prevail because we are philosophers, people who know a lot, intelligent people. We have a lot of intelligence, just like science. Scientists say that they are the best, that there is no one in the world like scientists who discover so many things and know many things. At that time, they were the great philosophers. But here God says, they said, our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? No one. That is what the philosophers would say. No one is Lord over us. No one is over us. Today, scientists, they deny God and they say, well, we are the greatest. We are science. We are technology. We have created ways to go to the planets. We have created airplanes and boats, ways to go to the moon. All of these abilities. Look at the Internet. The Internet. That is created by science, by people who are are called the great scientists who know so much about technology. Well, they feel that they're superior and they don't believe in God. They say, no, God doesn't exist. That is what he is highlighting here, that God doesn't exist. But God says, I'm going to punish them. I will humiliate them and I will show them so that they may learn that I am the one who gives them that intelligence and the abilities and he gives them science. God is everything for us as human beings. That is what the Lord is saying here. That they may not be proud, nor shall they proclaim that they know everything. He says, you are nothing, nor do you know everything. You are just a human being. That is what God can say to a person who are like that, who is proud who believe they are very important. Very well, let us continue with another question. Another question. She loves you very dearly, sister. Very much. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas. Bueno. Mi hermana María Luisa, Dios la bendiga. Gracias, gracias. Oh, your Spanish is great. C'est un très grand privilège que vous nous... It's a great privilege for you to be here with us today, sister. Nous avons et nous savons, donc non vous pardon. Nous vous aimons dans le Seigneur. We love you dearly in the Lord. Ma sœur, my sister, j'ai une question. I have a question. Bon lire dans Luc 15. That we can read in Luke chapter 15. Luc 15. Luke 15. You may do so. You may read. C'est la parabole de l'enfant prodigue. Luke 15, 21. Luke 15, 29. Yes. Yes. Oui, vous pouvez lire, ma soeur. Parfois, nous, nous, essayons, nous essayons très fort de plaire à Dieu, les aimer. Les années passent. Et nous voyons, nous voyons nos frères et sœurs de l'Église recevoir les bénédictions du Seigneur. Many times, this is the question, sister. The sister states, many times we seek to please God. We see many brothers and sisters from the church receive the blessings of God. Nous savons que nous avons les promesses du Seigneur. We know that we have the promises of the Lord. Et nous savons que Dieu les accomplira. And we know that God will fulfill them. Pour nous, en temps voulu. Mais que, que devrions-nous faire pour ne pas ressentir ces versets? But what do, we, what do we need to do while we wait so that we don't feel what it reads here in this verse, verse 29? Nous voulons aussi que le Seigneur nous bénisse. Que le Seigneur nous bénisse. We want for the Lord to bless us and allow for us 
nous permet de les servir to serve him les dons spirituels with the spiritual gifts. Thank you, sister. May God bless you greatly. Thank you. Sister, do you live here or does she live here? Vous habitez ici, ma soeur? J'habitais ici et ouais. puis j'ai retourné en Suisse. She lived here but returned to Switzerland. Oh, okay. Yes. Very well. So, sister, you are... So, it isn't exactly a question, but the sister is analyzing. She is analyzing the acknowledgement that when we make a decision to follow God's path, we follow... We follow the path and nothing is going to stop us. We won't turn to one side or the other or turn back, but remain steadfast so that this way God may give us the triumph in our lives. And no one can mock us because there are many people who come, who are in the congregation, who get tired and they leave and the other mock them. Weren't you in this church and you say that God spoke to you? What happened? Why didn't you continue? And so people begin to mock. So that is why here the Lord Jesus gave this teaching that in order to attain eternal life and to become God's disciple, we need to fulfill the commandments of God, but also bear and tolerate trials or the difficult moments that we may have in our lives, that we may press on, that we may be steadfast and press on so that no one may mock us because God will bless us and God will be with us. Very well. Let us go to another question. Yes, another question. Bonjour, ma soeur. Bienvenue à l'île Maurice. Welcome, sister, to Mauritius Island. J'ai une question pour vous sur I have a question regarding regarding idolatry. Yes, yes, continue. Je sais que dans, le, dans nombreuses études bibliques, I know that in many Bible studies, on parle souvent de comment faire comprendre. We speak about how to, or you have taught us how we should make others understand. Aux de notre entourage, la famille et les amis the people who are around us, family members, friends, que dans notre église, qu y a la du who are within our church and they live the manifestation of the Lord about the true God and that we have a God that speaks. Très souvent, leur que nous avons le Many times we tell them that we have the Holy Spirit, que ce pas en image. that He's not an image, Ils nous disent, par exemple, que depuis leur jeunesse, ils ont été enseignés de prier ainsi. And they tell us that it's difficult for them because from their youth, they have been taught to worship those idols. Que ces images représentent leur Dieu et que c'est... Et c'est assez difficile de le faire comprendre. And those images represent their gods, and for me, it's very difficult for me to get them to understand. Que Dieu n'entendra pas leur prière en que, disant que, ces images. That the Lord will not listen to their prayers if they continue to use those images. Ou en gardant ses coutumes. Or keeping their customs. J'aimerais savoir comment leur convaincre de croire et d'arrêter avec l'idolâtrie. I would like to know, sister, how can we convince them so that they stop having that idolatry. Well, sister, it's not so much for you to convince people. This comes from God. God is the one who convinces people. That is why here we need for there to be a church where all the time we can practice and teach the things of God, to teach others. We are not going to criticize, nor are we going to judge people and their beliefs. When I say that God is in spirit and we seek him in spirit, I am not criticizing the belief that you may have. But I am inviting you so that you can receive the doctrine, the teaching, 
the laying on of hands in a moment, if God speaks to you in prophecy, God is the one who works the miracle in your heart and removes all of those concepts. God is the one who changes people. We must never worry about changing someone else's religious mindset. No, we would waste our time. You just tell these people when the person comes and tells you, I believe in my gods. I believe in my gods. So then you say, yes, but I want you to believe in the God that I have. I invite you. I invite you so that when we do have services, that you may come and live the experience, this experience that is so beautiful. After you live that experience, when God speaks to your heart, then you will change your mind. Because this isn't from me, but God is the one who changes a person's way of thinking. Just as we read here in Acts that says that all were taken over by the Holy Spirit prophesying and there were people of all nations that were listening and it says they converted to God because the Spirit of God reached their heart and everyone was an idolater. They had their gods, their beliefs. But when the Holy Spirit came to their hearts, it says they changed and transformed And they told the apostles, we want, we want to be baptized. We are going to believe in Jesus Christ. And 3,000 converted that day. They were 3,000 with their own gods and religions. The matter isn't that you have gods or a religion. The matter is that you may have a heart that is willing to please a being that is spiritual, that wants to come to your life to give you peace, happiness, joy, and one day eternal life, to enjoy in the afterlife, to enjoy after death. That's it. We cannot forbid, brothers and sisters, we need to be very wise to evangelize. You speak to all those who are before you, and when you have the opportunity, testify to them that you have known a God that speaks and that comes and gives happiness and joy, that you also had your gods and your beliefs, but that this God that you have known has been superior And that gives so much joy and you want them to enjoy it as well, to enjoy what you are enjoying. That is how you should speak to them. So people come to me and they say, I have my religion. I have my beliefs. And I say, good, I'm happy that you are religious because that means that you seek someone to support you, to give you happiness. That's what it means. So since you have your religion, I'm also going to speak to you about what I've lived, my experience. I invite you. I invite you to come here and receive prophecy. So the person says, I'm going to go. When they come and they receive the word of God in prophecy, then the person works a miracle. And when God works a miracle in a person, just as he has done in you and in you, the sister who had just spoken. God worked a miracle in transforming you because before you had your beliefs. And so God changed you. Or did someone force you saying that you needed to change? No, nobody. All you need is to testify, lay hands, give prophecy, and God does the rest. The important thing is happiness and peace that God gives. That is the important part. Everything else God will do. God is the one who changes people's mindsets and changes people's point of view. The Lord teaches them to each man or woman what they ought to do in whom they should believe in. 
how things should be. God teaches it all. We human beings, we just say a supernatural being exists that is so powerful. He has given me peace and happiness. Things that not even money, not even billions of money can give happiness. But that God that I have in my heart, that I have known, he does give true happiness. That is enough. You can evangelize in such a simple way. Yes, sister, and I know that God is going to help you. And you will understand. And don't say anything to them. Just say, continue believing in your gods. Continue believing in your gods. When there are services, we are going to pray and God is going to speak to us. I invite you, come with me. So that you may experience something different. And you will not regret it. That is the way that you should speak. Very well, let us continue with another question. Another question. Good morning, Sister Mary Luisa. It's a great happiness, a great joy in my heart to have you here. Thank you, Sister. It's a privilege to have you in this country. And I'll continue in French. Um... I would like if you allow me to ask you a question found in Judges Judges 16 verse 4 Après cela, il aima une femme dans la vallée de Sorek Elle se nommait Delila les princes des Philistins montèrent vers elle et lui dirent « Flatte-le pour savoir d'où lui viennent sa grande force et comment nous pourrions nous rendre maîtres de lui. Nous le lirons pour le dompter et nous te donnerons chacun mille et cent cycles d'argent. Également, ma sœur, nous connaissons le péché de David avec Bathsheba. » And likewise, we know the sin of David with Bathsheba. Avec la femme du riz lorsqu'il a aimé une femme. The wife of... De, du riz. And how David made the husband of Bathsheba go to war to die. Je vois ma soeur beaucoup d'exemples bibliques similaires dans laquelle les personnes pêchent ou commettent des erreurs par amour. We see how there are many examples in which people commit errors because of love ou, pour, ou à cause d'un sentiment or for some type of feeling. Ma, ma question est, ma soeur My question is euh, comment faire pour qu'aucun sentiment, amour ou même émotion ne vienne surpasser l'amour et le désir de servir à Dieu et de lui être agréable How can we make sure that no love or other feeling can be so strong that it can overcome our desire to please God and love Him and do His will Here, the sister read a part in the Old Testament where the people of Israel was being led by the law of Moses by the commandments of Moses. And there, you can see that they never fulfilled this person sinned before God. Samson offended God. That was common at that time. That is why God was angry and punished the people of Israel, sent Jesus Christ so that he would begin to preach the good tidings. And so we... The believers of the gospel, followers, we need to obey him and to fulfill the will of God. And we will be able to achieve it with the help of the Holy Spirit. That is what we have. We have such a great advantage. The Holy Spirit is the one that helps us to change and to be transformed. Very well. Let us continue. Ma soeur, Maria Luisa, bienvenue à l'île Maurice. Sister Maria Luisa, welcome to Mauritius Island. Et vous êtes très belle. You are very beautiful today. J'aimerais lire dans un verset de la Bible, dans 1 Corinthiens 13, 11. I would like to read in the Bible, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. Vous pouvez lire, ma soeur. Vous Lorsque j'étais un enfant, j'ai parlé comme un enfant. J'ai pensé comme un enfant, j'ai raisonné comme un enfant. Lorsque je suis devenu homme, j'ai fait disparaître ce qui 
était de l'enfant. Ma sœur, nous avons des promesses de servir à Dieu. After reading this verse, the sister states that we have promises to serve the Lord. Comment ne pas estaner dans notre vie spirituelle et plutôt atteindre cette maturité spirituelle pour pouvoir servir Dieu? How can we, within our spiritual life, attain that spiritual maturity to serve the Lord? Very well. We are today here where God has promised that very soon the church will be established here. Officially. Officially meaning that every day the doors will be open to pray, to worship and glorify God, to read the Bible and to seek the Holy Spirit and to seek the spiritual gifts. So when this happens, when God fulfills what he has revealed today, you are going to be maturing little by little, growing, because in the spiritual things, we need to grow like children that are born and begins to grow. We also are born in the knowledge of God, but we begin to acquire maturity as we read and as God or the Holy Spirit comes to our hearts, God gives us revelations. He speaks to us. He gives us dreams. And so we begin to mature. And the spiritual gifts are already there. God has given you spiritual gifts from when you were born. And those gifts are going to become evident once the church is formed. Yet, if you dedicate yourself from now on and take five or ten minutes to read the Bible and to pray to God, God is going to give you spiritual experiences. He is going to give you dreams and revelations. And He is going to guide you. And you are going to be a pillar in the church in this place where God is going to bless your family, your loved ones. He's going to bless them greatly with your example, with your testimony. Many are going to believe what you are believing because that is the blessing from God. Yes. Let us continue. Let us continue. Yes. Yes, yes. Bonjour, uh, sir. Welcome, sister. Uh, Dieu vous bénisse. May God bless you. J'ai une question personnelle à vous poser. I have a personal question. Uh, Dieu s'est manifesté dans ma vie. The Lord has manifested himself in my life. Et puis j'ai fait une lecture de la Bible combinée en livre audio. I have read the Bible combined between reading and audio. Et puis j'ai terminé la Bible. And I have finished reading the Bible. Et parfois j'ai lu certains passages plusieurs fois. And I have read certain passages many times over. Et nous connaissons l'importance de lire la Bible. Knowing the importance of reading the Bible. Comme uh, vous nous avez enseigné une fois et plusieurs fois. How you have taught us many times. Uh, mais que faire parfois quand on n'a plus envie? My question is, what do we do then when we lose our desire? Uh, Qu'est-ce que vous conseillez? Uh, à ce moment -là. What would you recommend for us to do in those moments? Uh, merci, ma soeur Marie-Louise, et pour votre réponse, et que Dieu la vienne. Thank you, Sister Marie-Louise, for your answer. May God bless you. That is very normal. For at some point in our life, we feel lazy to do something. But don't worry about that laziness that you say you have. From now on, that laziness is going to go away. And God is going to be with you in your life, in your projects, in your work, in all aspects, whether it's personal, with family, and socially. You will have an abundance of work, and you and your family, the day will come where they will convert to this path of God. 
because you are going to know that God. You are going to live and experience with God. In dreams, God is going to teach you many things. Do not worry. Continue reading the Bible. If you already read it all, you can start again. Again and again. And God will give you happiness. True happiness. Because you have sought happiness and you have not found it. But you will find it very soon. Because God is going to give it to you. And you are going to be a happy man. And because of that happiness, your loved ones are going to ask you why they see a difference in you. And so you are going to say, I am reading the Bible. Do it and you will see you're going to live what I live. But from now on, your life will be changed and transformed. Do not force yourself to do anything. You do not need to do anything. It's God who will be with you. And he is going to give you this great blessing. And you are going to be very happy. May God bless you. Let us continue. Sister? Bonsoir, ma soeur. Good morning, Sister Marie Louisa. À chaque fois quand je prie, je demande à Dieu. Si un jour je dois voyager, j'aimerais bien aller rencontrer ta servante, Sœur Marianne. She has prayed many times. Many times I've prayed to the Lord and said, if one day I have the opportunity, I want to go and find your servant, our Sister Marie Louisa. Et dans la prophétie, le Seigneur m'avait dit euh, l'année dernière que bientôt ce que tu, tu m'avais demandé va accomplir. And a year ago, within prophecy, the Lord told her, and that which you have asked me, I'm going to fulfill it. Tu vas voir la sœur Maria Luisa devant tes yeux. You will see my daughter Marie Luisa in front of you and face to face. Et aujourd'hui, je remercie le Seigneur que vraiment sa promesse a accompli. And today, she truly thanks the Lord because that promise has been fulfilled. Our sister being here is a great blessing for me and the entirety of the Mauritius Island. I have a question regarding fasting. May I, sister? Yes. Merci. We can read in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 6, yes. 17. You may read. Lorsque vous jeûnez, ne prenez pas un air triste comme les hypocrites qui se font les visages tout fait. Pour montrer aux hommes qu'ils jeûnent, je vous le dis en vérité. Ils reçoivent leur récompense, mais quand tu jeûnes, porte ta tête, lave ton visage, afin de ne pas montrer aux hommes que tu jeûnes, mais à ton père qui est là, dans les lieux secrets de ton père qui voit dans le secret que le rendra. Ma question est... My question is the following. In Matthew 6, 16 to 18. Mm -hmm. And the question? Ma question est, nous savons par la doctrine d'aujourd'hui, le jeûne est spirituel. We know by doctrine that today, fasting is spiritual. Mais de nombreuses personnes dans l'église évangélique jeûnent. But many people within evangelical churches fast. Ma question est, faut-il jeûner? Si My question is, do we have to fast? If yes? Comment devrions-nous procéder? Il faut jeûner ou pas? How should we proceed? Very well. It is very necessary to know doctrine, understand it, and to practice the commandments of the Lord. That is more important than fasting. Because fasting is to abstain from eating... Basically, it's to be hungry. That is fasting. But my soul, my heart, continues having the same spiritual bond with the same sin, with the same sadness, bitterness, rage, 
anger, arguments, grudges, to be a liar, to be a deceiver. So fasting doesn't remove those things. But we should change all of these things and we begin to live a holy, upright life before God. And so if I am sincere, I love, I have mercy, I don't lie, I don't deceive anyone, that is better than fasting. It is better. But if someone today lives a holy life, they live a perfect life with God, and they want to fast, they can do it. But this doesn't give or take anything spiritually. Fasting was for the ancient people of Israel because they did not have the help of the Holy Spirit to change from their bad ways. And so that is why they had to fast to convince God to forgive them and to have mercy. Today in the gospel, the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit is with us. And he helps us to cleanse our hearts from what is bad. And so we don't need to fast. We just pray and we ask God in prayer to help me solve the problem, to remove my tribulation, to remove my illness, my sadness. That is, it says that is the true fasting here in Isaiah. But don't worry about fasting. Ask God, pray to him, ask him to reveal many things to you that he may want to reveal to you. God is going to be revealing to you in dreams, doctrine, and some behaviors of your life that you need to turn away from. And God is going to give you dreams and he's going to teach you. The Lord also says that he's going to take away an illness that you have in your body. You are sick. You have an illness. It seems as though someone has done witchcraft or sorcery on you. God is going to remove that and he's going to heal you. He is going to deliver you. And you are going to have a slender body. God is going to make you very healthy. That is the promise that God has given you. That is what God is giving you. Very well. So the last question with the sister. Sister, I'm very happy to, for you to be here with us. We were awaiting this moment with much patience. She, at the beginning, was sad because she wasn't able to come to the congregation today. But I prayed and prayed and asked the Lord to allow me to have that great blessing. Vu mon âge, je parle tout doucement maintenant, mais Dieu m'a accordé cette faveur. Je suis très contente d'être là parmi vous pour recevoir cette bénédiction. Because of my age, I walk very slowly, but I'm very grateful to the Lord because He has allowed me to be here and enjoy of this great blessing. Je vous dis ça de tout mon cœur. Merci au Seigneur que vous êtes là et moi je suis là parmi vous. Je suis très contente. I give thanks to the Lord because he has allowed me to be here because you are here, sister, and I am very happy. I am very happy to have you here, sister, and I have a question. It's that in many situations when I open the Bible, a sort of laziness enters and I feel very sleepy. Merci, ma soeur. Why could this be and what can I do, sister? Thank you. Don't worry, that laziness will go away. Yes. God is going to deliver you. 
He is going to cleanse you. He is going to break spiritual bonds and chains. He is going to remove the sadness in your heart because in your heart, there is a very deep sadness. The Lord is going to remove that sadness and sorrow and and that spiritual blessing that he has for you. He will be giving it to you soon because God has blessings for you. You are going to have a change of life. You are not going to realize it. When? When you least expect it, you will be a different person. God is with you. He will cleanse you and bless you. And he will give you an abundance in your family, in your home. An abundance. And he's going to be multiplying the money that comes through your hands. And your heart will truly be converted to God. And God is going to help your family because you have family members that are in great need. God is going to fulfill what they need out of the love he has for you. Glory to our God. Glory to God. Very well. Let us continue. We are going to pray. And we are going to give thanks to God for this service. And after the prayer, we are going to sing chorus 172, which is titled, I Know That You Are Here. And God has shown me, he has revealed to me, for you all, many blessings for each person specifically. God has a benefit and God has given you a spiritual and material blessing, physical blessing that you will be enjoying in these days. After this day, you will begin to experience how the love and power of God will be in your hearts. God is going to awaken in you a new spirit to seek God, to search the true spiritual things. The Lord is going to work a great wonder or miracle in your life. He will remove needs and he will be giving material blessings as well, physically through a job and money to solve your problems. He will give true happiness and joy to each and every one of you. Therefore, I invite you so that you may make time and read the Bible. Read the Bible and when you read it, do it with a heart for God. And you will say, God, you exist. Look, I'm going to read the Bible so that you can come to my heart, to my life. Do not worry because God knows how to proceed and act with each and every one of you. Ask God for healing for your body, for the illnesses as well that some of your children have, family members as well who are sick. Ask God and God is going to heal. And he is going to give you all of what you need. We are going to be praying and giving thanks to our God, Holy Father, Heavenly Father, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you, our God of Abraham, of Moses, Jacob, Isaac, you, the Almighty God, who was in the past with the people of Israel. And you punish them because they were disobedient. But today, you are forming a new people in the gospel, in Christ Jesus. And we are here before you, led by your Holy Spirit, taught by you. And you are here, Lord, blessing many, delivering and blessing. You are reaching each person's heart 
removing sadness and sorrow and pain and suffering. You are delivering many from witchcraft and sorcery of curses. You are untying spiritual bonds, breaking chains and delivering. Thank you, Father, for doing these things. That this may not be the first and last time, Lord, of this service or of a Bible study, but that you may fulfill soon your promise of raising male and female pastors, male and female teachers in this city, in this wonderful island, in this corner of the world. My Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask for your blessings for those who are here in this moment congregated, those who are going to be watching us in the video, that they may also receive and partake of the blessing. Bless this island, this republic, this country, and bring many people to your fold. Bring people. Convert them, Father, because you are the one who converts hearts. You are the one who is going to give a change of life. Extend your powerful hand and work miracles and wonders in each person. Not only physically, but spiritual as well. Fulfill all of their needs. Thank you, Father. In the glorious name of Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yo sé que estás aquí, Señor. Yo sé que estás aquí. Yo sé que estás aquí, Señor. Yo sé que estás aquí. Mi alma te alaba. Mi alma te alaba. estás aquí. Mi alma te alaba. Mi alma te alaba. Mi alma te alaba. Porque sé que estás aquí. Yo sé que estás aquí, Señor. Yo sé que estás aquí. Yo sé que estás aquí, Señor. Yo sé que estás aquí. Mi alma te alaba. Thank you to our Almighty God. Thanks be to the King. Thanks be to our Lord Jesus Christ. Mighty. You are mighty. Mighty is our God. Mighty is the Lord. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you. May God bless you all. See you soon. May God bless you.